Hey everyone, Caroline Roberts here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing seven things that you should never do in Israel. And all these things are things that I personally learned on my recent trip to Israel as a first timer who has never been there before. And I wish I didn't do some of these things or I wish I had known. So I am making this video so that you don't do the mistakes that I did <laughs> and that you go prepared and you're ready and you know what to expect. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. One of the things that you should never do in Israel is ask for pork at a kosher restaurant. Guys, I felt so ashamed because <laughs> Not only was it Shabbat, which is their Sabbath in Israel, and that's around the time that I went during Sabbath, um, I went to a Pizza Hut. And in my mind, every Pizza Hut has pepperoni pizza. And I felt so bad. I went to place my order and I was like, can we please have a large pepperoni pizza? And I didn't realize that the Pizza Hut there that I went to was kosher. And she looked at me and she's like, we don't sell any meat here. And immediately it hit me and I was like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? I cannot believe I asked for a pepperoni pizza on Shabbat at a kosher restaurant. And I was like, okay, oh no, oh no, Lord forgive me, I'm so sorry. But seriously, I felt bad about it. And I just wanted to share that because just so you're mindful, um, there are a lot of vegetarian places there, a lot of vegan places there, I'm um, in a lot of kosher places there. So look at the menu before you order and just know where you're eating at. So that's my first tip. Number two, okay, the second thing that you wanna be aware of um, going to Israel that you don't want to do is you do not want to dress inappropriately. Now, I'm someone who believes that modesty, it could be relative. It is based on your convictions to an extent. Of course, you wearing cut booty shorts and having everything out, I don't think you can say, oh, it's not my conviction, right? But to an extent, there is a gray area that depending on your culture, depending on your background, depending how you were raised, depending on um, your conviction, depending on your history, um, just depending on different things, can change what is modest in your situation. Some people think jeans are not modest. Some people think skirts are not modest. Like it, there's so many different ways to go about it. But just be aware of what modesty looks like, especially when you are going to um, Israel because it is a different culture there. And when you are going on the different tours and things, certain churches and certain places that you may wanna visit, they're not gonna allow you in if you are not dressed modestly um and certain neighborhoods are different right so where our hotel was and i loved our hotel it was amazing i'll link it in the description where our hotel was it was like a hub of um tourists <laughs> i mean there's a lot of um people who are israeli who were in that area but where our, where our hotel was there's a lot of restaurants it's near the old city so a lot of tourists go there so i felt like comfortable dressing like how I would dress in the U.S. if I would like go out to um, a restaurant or something because everyone was wearing like, you know, shorts, t-shirts, like there are people from all over the world in that area. But we walk into the rental car place. Um, the neighborhood we were in was a Jewish, a mainly Jewish Orthodox neighborhood. Everyone on the street, everyone walking, everyone there had like the hats. They had like the similar, um, you know, garments that they were wearing. They had like the curly hair, like everyone there had a specific look. And me and my husband walking the streets, we stood out like a sore thumb. And <laughs> I had just gotten off the cruise because we had went to Israel because we were taking a seven day cruise out of Israel, a seven day Mediterranean cruise. So I had just gotten off the cruise. So I had my cruise wear on, um, which I wasn't wearing anything like inappropriate in my mind. Like I didn't have any cleavage um, showing, like my cleavage was fully covered. 
Um, I didn't have anything short. Like I had a jumpsuit on. I had a jumpsuit, a leg, a pant jumpsuit. Um, so like I was covered up in my opinion, but my shoulders were out and the material was kind of like a spandex material. So it was a little tight, I believe, for that culture versus like if I'm in America, like I would wear that jumpsuit anywhere. I'd wear it to go to Publix, anywhere I was wearing it on the cruise. So for me, it was modest. But when I got into that neighborhood and everyone around me was wearing like the same thing and we were sticking out like a sore thumb, um, the little school girls who just came out of school, they were like looking at me and they were like talking and whispering and they were laughing and I was like, oh my gosh, babe, I am dressed. I think I am dressed inappropriately. <laughs> like I didn't expect that. So I just um, want you to be mindful like when you're going there to just really pay attention to your wardrobe and what you plan on wearing and where you plan on going while you're in your zero because there are different neighborhoods, there are different places where what you usually wear may be acceptable, but there are places, maybe some tours or churches or things that you wanna visit um, that it's not acceptable. Okay. Number three. So um, one of the things that you don't want to do um, or that you wanna be mindful of when you're in Israel, especially if you're there during Shabbat, is to don't use the Shabbat elevator. And I had no, like, it didn't occur to me because in our hotel, there's two different elevators. And one day we were in the elevator and we were, we thought something was wrong with it. We thought there was a problem because it kept stopping and stopping at every floor. And we're like, what is going on? They need to fix this elevator. Um, so we were confused about that. And then, um, we came back to the hotel one night and, you know, we were clicking the button and we were waiting for the elevator. And um, this guy next to us who was Jewish, he was like, no, this is the Shabbat elevator. You don't use this. And I was still like confused. He's like, you can use this elevator here because it's just going to go to where you want to go. It's not going to stop at every floor. But the Shabbat, the Shabbat elevator in reverence of Shabbat is going to stop at every floor. And um, we did research on this because my husband and I were so confused. Like we just didn't understand, we didn't know. And during Shabbat, it's I believe it's like a law or a thing during Shabbat where you're not supposed to operate electronic objects. Like you're not supposed to operate um, like electronics or push electronic um, buttons and stuff. So my husband and I were like, where is the elevator? And we're pressing the button. We're like, the elevator's taking so long. And I guess it was stopping at every floor. And the guy is like, you're using the wrong elevator. Like the elevator's going to come when it comes. And when it comes, it's going to stop at every floor. Um, so we just ended up taking the stairs, but we did not know. And that is just something that I want you to be aware of. Know what type of elevator you're going on, especially if you're there during Shabbat. Um, and if you're in a rush, don't take the Shabbat elevator, just take the stairs or take the other elevator that they have available. I'm going to give you two things that you don't want to do when visiting the Dead Sea in Israel. One of the things is um, putting the mud on your face. Like I think the mud on your skin, your arms is great. But I wanted to go the extra mile and put the mud on my face because I love skincare. I love facials. And when I'm at home in the U.S., I'm always doing like mud masks and stuff like that. So I put the mud on my face. And here's why. Not because it's dirty, not because of anything like that, but because when it was time to wash the mud off my face, the water was so salty. And I was putting that water on my face, trying to get um, the mud off that the water was on my lips and it was so salty that my lips, like I started getting thirsty. I started feeling dehydrated because the water was just so salty. I couldn't finish washing my face. Thank God I had a um, bottle of water that I brought with me to the beach. I had to walk onto shore with a muddy face on and go get my bottle of water with the fresh water that I had and then pour my fresh bottle of water on my face to take it off. And I was like, I am not putting my face in this water just because it's so salty that if it even gets on your lips and you like do this with your lips and it gets to your tongue, you are going to feel so thirsty. 
So after I washed it with my face, I had to just drink a bottle of water because I just felt so thirsty. I'm like, this water is so salty. Um, so just be careful for that. And because the water is so salty, the second thing you don't want to do when you go to the, de the Dead Sea is if you have any cuts, make sure you put on a Band-Aid and do not shave before you go. I know it's normal for us in the U.S., especially us ladies, before we go to the beach, we're like, I need to be shaved up everywhere uh-uh honey not not here not here <laughs> it's gonna burn it's gonna burn bad um so just wear this is probably the place where you want to wear a bathing suit with the extra good cover up you want to wear like a good bathing suit that will cover your skin up to protect your skin especially in those sensitive areas because if that salt gets to those sensitive areas i'm warning you it will burn you because there's so much salt in the water. The next thing that you shouldn't do when you're in Israel is you should not expect for breakfast to be light. So here in the U.S., you know, we have light breakfast. You know, we can have a bagel, a donut, and that's breakfast. I was so blown away, happily blown away and delighted. My hotel, um, which I'll link in the bottom, when we woke up for breakfast, the buffet breakfast was included. I have never been to a hotel with this much breakfast. Um, and I'm gonna put a clip of it in here, but there were just so many options. My husband was like, what is this? We didn't know what was what, but I tried it and I ate up and it was just so good. There were so many different types of cheeses, so many different types of sauces, so many different types of pastries, so many different types of breads. It was amazing. I, I love it. So in Israel, breakfast is like brunch. Breakfast is like a, a big meal um, and it's a lot of food. So if you love breakfast and this is good news for you, um, just be an expectation for that. Number six, another thing you don't want to do is don't be surprised or don't be worried when you see people in the military on the bus, on the street with you with guns. Like it's a very normal part of um, their everyday life. I believe that everyone is required to be in the military after they're 18. It's just a very normal part of their everyday life. They're doing it to protect you. Um, they're a part of the army. Um, there may be army checkpoints. We rented a car and we were driving and exploring on our own. And at first I was a little startled because we came to a checkpoint and like they had guns and they're like, um, what is your intentions? Where are you going? Do you have your passport? And I was like, what is going on? <laughs> Cause I'm not used to that. Right. But they do have different checkpoints and stuff, but then we got used to it. We got used to going to the different checkpoints and things like that. Um, but just be aware, just be aware that there is an army presence and you know, you'll see like 18 year olds, 19, 20 year olds, you know, carrying guns and things like that is different than here in the U.S., but it's a normal part of their everyday life. It's nothing to be afraid of or worried about. And then number seven, one thing you don't want to do is if you're there during Shabbat, don't plan to do a lot of driving. First of all, driving is not allowed in the old city um, during Shabbat. And the other thing is it's going to be hard for you to find parking. Thankfully, with the hotel I stayed at, they worked with us because they knew that you know, we were tourists and stuff and they saved a parking spot for us in the parking garage. So we didn't have to find an expensive public parking garage. We didn't have to parallel park on the street. The streets were packed with cars parked because they don't drive during Shabbat. They don't go anywhere. So just be mindful that um, if you do plan on renting a car, it's going to be a little harder around Shabbat because Finding parking may be harder unless you have a designated parking garage. And during Shabbat, the rental car company basically won't be open if you arrive there Friday after 1230. You can't even rent a car. And the only place where I could return the rental car was to the airport because all of the rental car companies, like the local shops, are closed for Shabbat. Public transportation closes Friday at 2 p.m. So they do have public transportation, but don't plan to take it during Shabbat. Thankfully, we were able to use the train before it closed at 2 p.m. Um, we were able to take the train to get to our car rental and whatever we needed to get to before it closed on Friday. If you get there like Monday to Thursday, you can get to a lot of places taking the train. The train is really good. It's clean. Um, 
it's really good. We really enjoyed our experience with taking the train. So definitely look at that as a transportation option. I think the public transportation there is very good. All right, so those are my seven things you should never do in Israel. I hope that you found this video insightful and helpful. Are you planning a trip to Israel in the near future? Or have you ever been to Israel? Let me know in the comment section. All right, if this is your first time on my channel, please do not forget to subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, leave it a thumbs up. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next YouTube video. Until next time, bye.